mainly due to its remote location, only about 10% of the visitors to the Grand Canyon go to the North Rim. We left Walnut Canyon National Monument and head north on US 89. It was green when we left, uh, you can see the trees there, but soon we were passing into the desert. It's a long way up to the North Rim, uh, over 200 miles, so you gotta plan most of the day to get there if you wanna stop at a few of the places along the way. First stop was Marble Canyon in the Navajo Bridge Interpretive Center. Yes, we're in the desert, so it was very hot, 102 degrees. On the north side is the original Navajo Bridge completed in 1929. The new bridge to the south was completed in 1993. There's the Colorado River. Flying high above the river were some California condors. We, we continue on US 89A past the amazing Vermilion Cliffs. We climbed out of the desert into the coolness of the pine trees just before our turn at Jacob Lake. Okay, we're about an hour away from the North Rim, 77 degrees, about an hour ago it was 102 down at the Colorado River crossing at Navajo Bridge. So it feels so much better. So about an hour hopefully I'll get set up and relax for a little bit. Okay, our final turn. Driving south on 67, you can see the devastation caused by wildfires. stopped at the entrance sign to take some photos, then made our way to the campground to set up camp. We are here, we are tired, and the, the campground, campground is set up. up. Yoo-hoo! With the campground all set up, it's time to go view the canyon. We are walking down to see the Grand Canyon for the first time. And I'm pretty excited for both of these guys that I love a lot to see the canyon. My mom always dreamed of taking us kids to the Grand Canyon so she could see our faces when we first saw it. Unfortunately, she was never able to do that. But I had the same dream for my kids and I'm just about to share that experience with Dave and Rosie. I love the sound. After visiting the canyon at the campsite, we went to the Nature Trail in the Bright Angel Point Overlook. Lastly, we went to the lodge to relax and watch the sun setting on the Grand Canyon. In fourth grade, I read Brighty of the Grand Canyon and decided that someday I would ride a mule down the canyon. Finally, I'm able to do it, and I am so excited. At the North Rim, there are three choices in mule rides. We took the one that took us down to the Supai uh, Tunnel which is a three-hour ride down into the canyon and back. On this trip, however, you must weigh under 200 pounds fully dressed. Looks like I made it. 
And going down the North Kaibab Trail, it is very important that you get your feet out in front of you, your heels down, your toes up, a little pressure on your feet, and lean back. Now the most important thing today here is to make your meals go. Make them stay right up into a tight groove. What time is when these mules get way behind, they have a tendency to run or gallop to catch you up. You don't want them running up on these trails. So for your safety and the people's safety behind you, do make your mules stay up at all times. Mm -hmm. but the main thing today here is, well, let's go have a good time, but a safe time. Safety is number one. Dono is truly living the dream. But just don't mess with Mule Skinner Rose. Good, good job, Woodrow. He says, I know where I'm going. You don't need to tell me. Also guys, this is our Coconino Overlook. If you guys got your cameras, go ahead and take some cool pictures as we pass it. We'll go by slowly, but we'll be up here as we press. Okay, so we'll come by and we'll make sure everybody gets those photos on the way back. You did really good there. Keep going. Is he? Come on, you're not peeing, are you? Come on. Bye bye. Woo! You are such a good mule, Woodrow. So a lot of the reasons why we just use mules out here in the Grand Cane is because they have smaller hooves than horses. That makes them more sure-footed. Plus, they got these big old muscles on their bodies, on their joints, so it protects their joints from wear and tear. Okay, so they can endure more than horses can. They get the best of both worlds. They get their build and athleticism from their from their horse side and but they get their brains and intelligence and way of thinking from their donkey side or their father's side right uh, no. In the morning, while I made breakfast in the camper, Rose tended to the campfire. Today, she just wanted to hang back, read, write in her journal, and do some exploring on her own. It's uh, Thursday morning. We're about ready to take the uh, road to Point Sublime, 18 and a half miles, uh, supposedly kind of rough in spots. We'll see how it goes. To get to the road, you take Highway 67 North and take a left on the Point Sublime Road. Okay, ready to start our drive, 18 miles. Ready, Donna? I'm all ready. The road is four-wheel drive and high clearance recommended. While we didn't have high clearance, we figured if we could make it if we went slow. If it got really bad, we'd just turn around. The start of the road is smooth. A 
However, it didn't take long till you start getting a little rough. key to successful off-roading is picking a good line, having good tire placement, and going slow. We came out of the woods and into a meadow. This was not a surprise to me as in researching the drive I learned that there was a uh, two mile long meadow. But what we came across next was totally unexpected. Oh. I creeped up slowly on the herd, not wanting to scare them and figured I'd be passing them to the left. Yes, after they crossed in front of us, they got up on the ridge to our left and got in the line. The bigger ones in the front and the smaller ones in the back. And then they were just doing a stare at us. Pretty intimidating. <laughs> that was fantastic. Oh, I mean, they're, they're, they're actually behind us. I hope they don't start charging at us. We're just going to go really slow. They're all kind of staring at us. <laughs> now they're going back on the road back there. Okay. If you could look at the having look all at the of mirror. them having all of them stare at you at once. <laughs> <laughs> oh. We continue through the meadow, and then we are back in the woods. To avoid scraping the bottoms on the deep ruts, I had to ride the berms. Fortunately, this ended up causing some aspen pinstriping, which mostly washed out. Okay, we are eight. Eight miles in, it's taken us an hour and a half to do eight miles. It was some pretty rough stuff back there, uphill and ruts and boulders, but so far so good, knock on wood, even if it's burned wood. Okay, well, onward. A little way down the trail, we passed a ranger in a Jeep, and shortly behind him was a Porsche Cayenne, which I actually helped uh, maneuver off the side of the road so we could both get through the narrow trail. That's good enough! And where are we again? At 10.6 miles into our drive. Water. Water. <laughs> I guess I better slow down. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. This one. What does he do? Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm just going to pay attention to the road. Yeah. Not, not to the fact that Don is filming you. No. Don't mind that scraping. <laughs> Love taps or something. Uh. Okay, we came to a fork in the road and we'll take it. 
to the left. This is not the point, but it's the only other set place on the road where the road comes next to the canyon. So I had to get out and check it out. And uh, the wind was a blowing. The last bit of road is a, you start climbing a bit and the gravel is pretty coarse. In that one section there's actually a drop off on the right and on the left side as you head up to the top. The view from the road as I'm driving by. We came across a couple walking their dogs. Anybody be up here or not? It's always oh, there. There. Yeah. Yeah. Two loose dogs at the end. We couldn't go. Oh, really? Is there a car park there with them? Who just Must left? be, yeah. Yeah, there's a couple of camping spots out of the very end of the point. So, yeah. They're usually occupied. Where are you guys from? Wisconsin. Oh. Long drive. Yeah. <laughs> Did you come and the longest was Kaibab? this last little bit, What's right? That? We came in from the Kaibab. Yeah. Yeah, 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 from the not it? not from the park. Go well, from the park, yeah. You did? Oh, okay. In that car? Yep. Just take your time. Go slow. Oh okay. God. Just a little ways further, and we made it out to the point. It was a bit busy by the point, so we decided to go down and see if we could find a quiet place to sit by the canyon. It's like a show. It's sublime. Now it feels a little more relaxed. It feels a little more sublime, yeah. Right it was now, like before a, it was a little uh, busy at the point there, but... It was a little too busy for my taste. Yeah, I understand. That's why we drove all the way out here. <laughs> so, <clears throat> here we are in the middle of the forest, taking a different route back. Um, as you can should see how the GPS that's where it says we are don't exactly know what that means but 67 is just to the east so we'll just keep on going now we're leaving the north end of the north rim of the Grand Canyon National Park and hopefully a smoother road back out to Highway 67 we'll see after leaving the park we got on some well graded fire roads that led out to Highway 67 For those not wanting to hike, uh, take a mule ride or a four-wheel drive road, there are uh, scenic drives out to uh, Point Imperial in Cape Royale.
all packed up, getting gas, and washing the windows, ready to roll. Okay, the women are down, taking one last look at the lodge, and then we're going to go to the south rim. I'll take one more last look at the north.